And let's talk to a history maker now, shall we? Yes, earlier this year, she became the first out lesbian to serve as undersecretary of any U.S. military branch. So how pleased are we now to welcome to GMA3 from the Pentagon, undersecretary of the United States Air Force, there she is, Gina Ortiz Jones. Ma'am, thank you so much for being here. Let me make sure I got this right. So you're telling me the little girl who was raised by a single mother who immigrated from the Philippines, who then served in the military during the don't ask, don't tell policy, went on to become undersecretary of the Air Force. Do I have that right? TJ, you got it right. <laughs> and based on what you just said, I like to say, look, there's nothing wrong with our country that can't be fixed with what's right with our country. I don't know who said it first, but I think that uh, what you just captured there exactly shows that. And I'm very thankful to, to serve in this capacity. And thank you for having me. Look, you know your story. You know your background. You know your family. You know your history. You know what you've been through but better than any of us. But still, to hear that and to think you're sitting where you're sitting, I know you've been on the job uh, almost half a year now. But still, do you still have your pinch myself moments? And what does your family still think about it all? Every morning, TJ, every morning I walk into the Pentagon and I challenge myself to be the undersecretary that I wish I had, uh, as you mentioned when I served under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, but also as I'm privileged to meet our hardworking airmen and guardians and our civil servants all across, uh, all across the globe doing the nation's work. I, I owe it to them. We owe it to, uh, to, to those bravely serving to, to allow them to serve to their full potential. And when you think about the challenges and opportunities that we face as a country, we don't have time or talent to lose. Uh, so I'm very thankful to be part of this leadership team. Nia, when you think back now, how could your experience have been different? And look, you, I think you're happy, certainly with where you are and how things worked out. And you probably argue that you had to go through what you had, what you went through to end up where you were. But how could the experience have been different for you and other members of the military who served under don't ask, don't tell if they didn't have to hide? How would our military even be different now? Uh, and even a matter of recruiting people over the years if that policy was not in place. Well, TJ, I think you highlight a really important point, which is when folks uh, do not feel like they can serve to their full potential, um, then that's potentially a readiness issue. Right? We need the nation's best and brightest from all across the country to come be part of our Air Force, come be part of our Space Force. So I'm very cognizant of the way, uh, given, as you mentioned, as my own experience, that the way our policies, our actions, our words every single day convey the value uh, that we place or do not place on one service. So I think just being cognizant of that every single day, from personnel issues to operational issues, uh, we need the most, uh, again, given the challenges that we face as a country. So how do we knock down those barriers to ensure those serving uh, can serve to their full potential? But as you rightly mentioned, uh, that those also thinking about their, their next steps in life and what their career choices might, might be, that they consider a life of public service. That's so important um, uh, for us, uh, certainly as a, as a country, when, again, we think about the challenges and opportunities that we face. What, what's your priority now? I know the military is still dealing with COVID like the rest of us, and I know that there are mm -hmm. deadlines for vaccinations and all kinds of things like that going on. But what, where, where do you see some of the, uh, the priorities for you right now? Well, you know, we as a as a nation are faced with a pacing challenge and the Secretary of Defense and certainly my boss, the Secretary of the Air Force, uh, have talked about the challenges that that we face with the pacing challenge that is China, certainly from a defense standpoint, certainly from an economic standpoint. And so we have to make sure that we are investing in the capabilities that allow our airmen and our guardians to have the best chance in a, in a high end fight. Um, and, and certainly as we think about those investments, we are also ta thinking about how do we ensure we are uh, retaining and recruiting uh, the nation's top talent. So how do we prepare for that high-end fight? How do we ensure our men and women can serve to their, their full potential? Uh, that is what the Air Force and certainly the Department of Defense's leadership team is focused on. And do I have right another family moment here? Your sister re-enlisted? Oh, yeah, I proudly re-enlisted her. I'm a proud big sister. Uh, yes, she's uh, she's in the Navy. I mean, the, there you go. That's right. Uh, very proud of my sister. She uh, um, is a is a is a wonderful um, uh, OS one. And, uh, you know, we have got a long line of, of uh, family members in, in the Navy. My service actually starts with my uncle's service. My yeah. uncle uh, joined the Navy as a steward. And for those that are not familiar with the program, it's a, it's a unique relationship that the U.S. Navy had uh, in their ability to recruit from the Philippines. And my uncle, like so many uh, um, uh, Filipino men at the time, jumped at the opportunity mm. to serve and have a chance at the American dream. And so, you know, you better believe that my mom 
Ramadan reminded us every single day that we were very lucky, not smart. We were lucky to be born <laughs> in this very special country. We'd have to give back to a country that gave us so much. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Undersecretary uh, Dean Ortiz-Jones, it was it's a pleasure talking to you. But it was such a treat to see you light up when I mentioned your sister and then your family and to see that picture, uh, for you to see that picture and just your reaction there. I know this is so special, special for everybody in your family. So congratulations and thank you for being here. We'll see you down the road, okay? Thank you, TJ. Take care. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.